from our studios at the Miracle Center in Ishpeming. This is ABC 10 News Now. Your 10 minutes of nonstop news begins right now. Good evening, folks, and thank you for joining us for ABC 10 News Now. I'm Dan Callahan. One local retirement home is doing their part in helping to find a cure for a disease that affects millions around the world. Mill Creek Assisted Living will be hosting a pancake breakfast on Sunday, August 12th, and will begin at 9 a.m. The employees and families at Mill Creek want to do their part in helping to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Our families and our residents are directly affected by Alzheimer's. Employees and families of Mill Creek have been pushing our fundraising this year for the Alzheimer's Association. We've always been involved, but this year we're really trying to push it further. Mill Creek is close to hitting their goals of raising $4,000 for the Alzheimer's Association. The pancake breakfast is open to the public and costs $5 per person. Goodwill and Comprenu, along with several other agencies, are hosting an electronic recycling event at the Goodwill Training Center in Calumet on Friday, May 4th, and Saturday, May 5th. Cell phones, computer monitors, copy machines, DVD players, and microwaves will be accepted, among other items. The collection is free of charge to donors. Collection will be Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is the first of several collections that will occur throughout the summer. The next collection event will be June 2nd in Marquette County. For more information, visit our website, abc10up.com. In downtown Marquette, Hot Plate is now open under new ownership, and it is better than ever. Escanaba, Michigan is the home to the state's number one diner, and that's Rosie's. Aspirus' new facility is now up and running and will be open to the public March 19th. Reporting from Iron River, I'm Dan Callahan from ABC10 and the CW5. This event has helped many NMU students and entrepreneurs alike in helping them gain more insight on their future careers and businesses. Reporting from Marquette, I'm Dan Callahan from ABC10 and the CW5. I'm pretty upset right now. The Eastern Conference semifinals game just ended between the Celtics and the Sixers, and the Sixers blew a 22-point lead Ooh. and lost, and Ben Simmons scored one point. So not a good look. Not a good start to the series for the Sixers, but I know you said you're a Toronto Raptors fan, so you're kind of in the same boat as me. Not yeah. a good start. The Cavs are up 2-0 on I, them. I am not happy no. about LeBron, you know, just now. I'm sorry. You, I, you, can't, you can't argue LeBron. He's the best I, basketball player in the league. I, okay, I, I, can't, I can't deny that, but, okay. you know, the team could be a lot better. You know, it, you can't be LeBron the only. LeBron is the team. Exactly. That's, that's the issue. <laughs> You know, I definitely think there's improvement within the team and not LeBron. Exactly. So. I just need to ask you, why do you like the Raptors? Oh, oh boy. Uh, well, it's also, <laughs> it's funny that you asked that. Uh, they're the only team uh, that's not in the U.S. Okay. and they have a dinosaur as a mascot. And so, yes, that's, that's, that's exactly <laughs> that, why that's I like That's a good them. reasoning. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. you know. I think it's, it's, I think it's, it's unique. Good. I'm new to know? sports, yeah. you know. It's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Rachel, for that wonderful conversation about the Toronto Raptors. The Blind Pig 906 is a modern-day speakeasy located in the Upper Peninsula. The establishment is built in a bar that was around during the 1920s and is now being revived in the 21st century. The theme is pulling back from the roots of the UP during the Prohibition era. The owner never thought she would be running her own business, especially a speakeasy-styled bar, but she is ready to make it her own and bring a little history of the UP Prohibition to her customers. During Prohibition, they called bars uh, the Blind Pigs, the Blind Tigers. It was, they sell at entrance to get in to see like a Greenland pig, charge you 25 entrance fee, and then give you a complimentary gin or whiskey drink as a way of by, kind of bypassing Prohibition laws. So we went with the Blind Pig because of the speakeasy feel and the history. The Blind Pig 906 has two entrances with only an image of their logo. This allows the business to give customers an ominous feel. After finding the establishment, the only way in is to go into a basement. This pushes the concept of a speakeasy back during the Prohibition era, even more as you venture back into the history of that era. Other than the fact that we are underground and there's not, um, we don't have any street signs that say the blind pig outside. Um, if you don't know you're looking for our giant pig with a blindfold, then you probably won't find us. And it's mostly a back alley entrance, so it's kind of got that speakeasy feel when you walk in the door. A lot of people, the first week when we were open, made the comment that they were scared when they walked in. And then they came around the corner and they're like, whoa, I didn't expect to see this huge bar underneath, underground, that nobody had any idea was even here. This establishment is trying to change that scene and do something different in the nightlife of Iron Mountain. All the bars around here are all the same thing. And uh, when she told me her ideas and it was going to be something different, uh, I was 100% in. It's just nice to do something different, 
you know, everybody is around here just gets sick of the same thing week after week. So everything we do is just different from everybody else. So if you are looking for a chance to jump back in time to the Prohibition era with a little bit of a modern touch, then the Blind Pig may be the place for you. Reporting from Iron Mountain, I'm Dan Callahan for ABC10 and the CW5. The Iron Mountain Downtown Development Authority and the Svelata Foundation invited the community today to join them in the unveiling of the newest mural of the Power of Words project. These projects were all done in the downtown area of Iron Mountain on the walls of a few local businesses. These artists put their hearts into their craft and worked long and hard hours to complete all three murals in just four weeks. As you can see, the finished product is breathtaking. Maya and her team have been working really hard and um, last summer they completed one beautiful mural in one month and this summer they did three in one month, so it's pretty awesome to see. These murals were also helped out by students who received scholarships from the Svetlata Foundation to come and intern under Maya. But some young students also came to just be a part of the project itself. Maya is always looking for more help on future projects as well. We give a lot of scholarships to work on these projects and it's, it's a lot of work to reach out to the, we try to reach out to the individual teachers from all the different areas, but I could certainly use a lot more applications than I get and also the local artists. You know, we, we want them to apply to work with us. Later this week, Maya Tavanati will be heading out of Iron Mountain, heading right to Manistique, where she'll be working on her next big project. Reporting from Iron Mountain, I'm Dan Callahan for ABC10 and the CW5. If you're a connoisseur of craft beer and looking for a reason to go out tonight, well, it is International Beer Day. International Beer Day is just a worldwide day for people to get together with their friends and go out and enjoy beer. It's also a good day to kind of give a nod to the people that pour your pints and brew your beer. The Upper Peninsula has been a great spot for the growing of the craft beer industry. It has gotten so big that it has been adopted into the culture of the UP. We have kind of developed our own beer culture and a lot of it just comes from all over the world. You know, we, we appreciate beer styles that have developed elsewhere and now we've kind of put our creative twist on, on beer here in, in uh, the United States and it's just kind of a fun thing for, for people to get out and enjoy with their friends. This process of crafting beer with exotic ingredients is a time-consuming and creative process, especially when creating different flavors. Although many don't know the time it takes to make some of these specialty brews. So Brian, how long does it take usually to brew a new batch? Usually a couple weeks. It depends from some beer styles take longer than others, especially if you're going to do like barrel aging or something like that. It can take quite a while. But the question is, how do you come up with these unique brews? Here at Cognition, we get inspired just by anything. Listening to music, going out to a restaurant and trying a food that might have some cool flavor combinations and then maybe tr trying to create a beer off of that. Or, uh, really, there's so many different things that can inspire a beer recipe. Um, it's just a lot like cooking in, in your kitchen, you know, you know how certain things taste and sometimes you just, an idea pops into your head and you're like, ah, I want to try something like that, you know, and just kind of get creative with it, have fun with it. Not only is crafting beer a process, but it is an art. And today is a great day to go out and support your local brewers. I'm Dan Callahan for ABC10 and the CW5, reporting in Ishpeming. The Delta Animal Shelter is in search of anyone who is willing to adopt a couple of furry friends. The shelter is a beacon of hope for all animals that have not found their forever home. The staff is always working hard to help rehabilitate and relocate animals to new families all over the UP. But they have been very busy this year and now they are at full capacity and in search of families to adopt. We adopt a lot of animals. Last week we adopted 32, but then we took in 32 as well. So we're kind of at a wash. Uh, this time of year is always a busy time of year for us with it being kitten season. Um, one great thing about adopting from a shelter is all animals are spayed and neutered, microchip, vaccinated, plus more. The animal shelter is currently taking care of 182 animals at the shelter and through foster care. So if you are unable to adopt, you can volunteer or donate supplies to help the shelter meet its requirements to help all these furry little guys. But if you are looking to add to your family, then the shelter will be excited for you to come in to their facility. Absolutely. Every household should have an animal, should have a pet. Um, these are some of our cutest here, uh, two little kittens that are going up for adoption, and they're looking for a great home to grow up in. For more information about the Delta Animal Shelter, you can go to our website at abc10up.com. Reporting in Escanaba, I'm Dan Callahan for ABC10 and the CW5.